I'm about to travel 7,000 miles away from home and I wanna show you everything in my tech bag. Chargers for my iPhone, charging adapters, battery packs, even passport holders that have a place for an air tag. Step one is the bag. I've used lots of bags over the years, including Peak Design's bag, which is great, especially if you have lots of camera and photo gear. But I'm going with the Waterfield Pro Executive Backpack. I love this backpack because it's a compact size, it will fit under the seat easily, and it's a little shorter, so I'll have a little more foot room. When I set this bag on the ground, it actually stays upright, it doesn't fall over. Has a place to put your carry-on handle through so you can roll it around with your luggage. And it has lots of great pockets, and I'll show you those as we go. What gear am I bringing? Laptop, iPad, iPhone, and all that. Because this is a work trip, and I'll probably record a podcast and maybe even make a video, I am bringing my 14-inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. This thing is a workhorse, I've edited lots of videos on it has the SD card slot built right in, so definitely bringing that. Now when it comes to the iPad, I'm a little torn right now. I'd be curious what you guys think in the comments. Right now I'm gonna bring my iPad mini with Apple Pencil. I actually edit all my podcasts right here on this device, and this is a great size for watching movies on the plane. A lot of times the larger iPad and your laptop gets too cumbersome on the tray table. So I'm pretty sure I'm taking this one. But to be honest, my M2 iPad Pro is right here with the Magic Keyboard. Still tempted to take this, so let me know what you think in the comments. There is still some room in this back pocket, so I could take all three of those devices, but then it gets really heavy, so we'll see. Step two, this is the accessory department where I have a lot of chargers and a couple other things. First thing in this pocket is my AirPods Max. This is actually another Waterfield case. This is their case for AirPods Max. I've had this since I've had AirPods Max. I do love it. And because it's a really long flight, about 11 to 12 hours, I want the AirPods Max for the comfort over the year. I'm bringing my AirPods Pro 2, I'll show you where I'm keeping those, but for a long flight, I think I'm gonna try these out and I'll report back which is preferable. Also in this pocket, I have the main charger I'll be using on the trip, it's the ESR 3-in-1 travel charger, I'll show you that in a moment too. Now one of the best strategies for packing is of course, a bag in a bag. And so here I have a lot more travel chargers and cables, I'll go through this in detail in a moment. And because I'm a podcaster at heart, I'm also bringing my Shure MV7. I wish this thing had a USB-C port, this way I can just bring USB-C cables all over and didn't have to worry about micro USB, but it's one of the best sounding reliable microphones and if I'm recording in a hotel room, this one will be pretty good at rejecting some of that room noise. So bring in the MV7 as well. One of my favorite pockets on this backpack is this top pocket. It's smaller but can hold accessories like AirPods Pro 2. Bringing these and I also have some chargers in here where I can access either on the plane or in the airport. This is the Anchor 60 watt GAN charger. It actually has two USB-C ports on the back. This would be great if I need to charge my iPhone or maybe my iPad before getting on the plane or on the plane. The nice thing about this Anchor charger also is it actually removes the plug like you do on Apple chargers and you can place international adapters so I can use this anywhere in the world. I'll put a link in the video description to this charger and a couple other ones I'll be bringing along. And in this quick access pocket on the top, I do have a USB-C cable, a USB-C to lightning cable, and my USB-C to MagSafe charger if I wanna charge my laptop using the fast charger from Apple. Now, if you have this backpack on your shoulder and you bring it around to the front, I like these side pockets right here. This would be great to hold things like a water bottle, but I actually have a big battery pack right here. This one is from Mophie. It is 20,000 milliamp hours and it has a USB-C port. That's a big deal. I wanna use USB-C as much as I can. And so this is what I'll use to charge quickly, either on the plane or wherever I am. I just like having another battery pack with me. Now, I'm a bit of a redundancy nerd, so I actually have Apple's MagSafe battery pack as well. I'll link my video up top for my best MagSafe battery pack chargers, but I still prefer Apple's. It gets the least hot of all the MagSafe battery packs. It has enough battery charge. I do wish it was USB-C, but it's just so handy and it's very slim. So I still keep this one and I do like it. I'm also bringing one more battery pack. Yes, I know, redundancy. This one is actually MagSafe as well, but it has a USB-C port at the bottom so I can just plug a cable in if I wanna just get the most battery juice out of it that I can. Nice little hook here to keep my keys as I'm traveling. Here on the other side, I have my SD card holder if I'm gonna be doing some filming. And also in this pocket, you have slightly stretchy netting which you can put various accessories, but this is where I keep the AirTag for my backpack. Last pocket here on the front, it actually has a zipper on either side. And in here, I'll keep my passport if it's not already in my pocket, but I wanna put it in the bag, maybe going through TSA security, I'll keep it right here. Now what's cool about this passport wallet, it actually has a place for an AirTag. So not only do I have an AirTag on my backpack, but I actually have one on my passport. Now, as I was planning for this trip, I already had a passport booklet where I kept several credit cards. This one is from Captain and Son, just a brand online. Really like the feel of it. But I thought, surely they have to make passport wallets that has a place for an AirTag. And sure enough, I found many of them. I actually bought a couple, so I have a couple here. I'll put links down in the video description. But I eventually went with this wallet. It has a nice little snap on the back, so you can unsnap it there. And there you'll see several places for cards. I have a couple there, I'm gonna add one more. And then of course, 
the passport book goes here. Now it is a very tight fit, but the passport does come out and you actually insert the air tag here by unbuttoning the wallet. And you can see you can make a little space and slide the air tag there. But otherwise the air tag is pretty secure and I can button the wallet and I'm good to go. There was another passport wallet here. I actually liked the leather a little better and the color. Nice design there with the little airplane and passport words. Has an elastic band to hold it shut. But this one did not have dedicated places for cards. This one was kind of like for boarding pass, which I don't have a paper boarding pass anymore. And then the wallet goes over here. And in the AirTag slot, you would actually put the AirTag underneath and slide it in there. Again, I liked the design. I liked the little AirTag peeking out here and the elastic strap to hold it close. But I still want a place for cards. I don't want to bring another wallet plus a passport book. So I'll be going with this passport book on my trip. Now, when it comes to charging my Apple Watch Ultra, iPhone, and my AirPods, I'm going to be using ESR's 3-in-1 travel charger. I really like this thing. Comes with a nice little case. And it's super slim for the charger itself. This is the charger. It opens up. It's nice stiffness, so it can actually change the angle where your iPhone is going to be mounted. You actually charge your AirPods here on this little platform. And then the Apple Watch charger plugs in here. Here in the case, you'll see the Apple Watch charger here, little magnetic attached cover. You can put this on the side and then this inserts into the charger right here. The nice thing here is you can actually use the Apple Watch charger separately if you'd like. And this whole thing is powered by USB-C. This whole travel charger with the carrying case is 80 bucks on Amazon. Link will be in the video description. I also like how this will not take up too much surface area on the nightstand. So this is what I'm using to charge as I travel. Now let's get into international charging. If you travel to other countries, you should know that there are lots of different connectors for the outlets. A while ago, I did buy this. This is Apple's World Travel Adapter Kit. If you've ever had an Apple charger, you know that the little plug slides out. You could put the extender cable here, which you don't see very often anymore, but this is actually useful for travel adapters. Now there are more inexpensive options like the Anchor, which I'll mention again in a second, but you get all the different adapters for everywhere in the world. Now on the box, it actually shows you which countries each adapter is for, but nicely, you can also see that on every adapter. So for instance, if you just look at this plug, if you look closely, you'll see the AUS. So that's for Australia. Where I'm going, I'll actually be using the European International Charger. And so that's right here. You can see the EUR. And that means I only need to bring this as I travel. This slides right onto the Apple Charger. And now I can just plug this in anywhere in Europe ready to go. Now again, because I'm a super redundancy nerd, this is not the only adapter I have. I have many others. I showed you I also have the Anchor adapter, which comes with the European one. And now I have two different chargers I can use when I travel. Finally, let me show you everything in this tech bag, which is a lot. I have a lot of cables. This is Peak Design's tech carrying case. I do really like this. They have lots of additional pockets and separators. So we jump into this main compartment. I've actually separated my USB-C to lightning cables. And I have another Apple Watch charger, just a straight cable, just in case. Again, redundancy nerd. And speaking of redundancy, I've also brought along some of these just simple converters from the US to the European plug. And just so you know, if you don't have the actual plugs that go into your Apple charger or this anchor one, you can just plug these into these simple adapters and then into the wall when you're traveling. This will be fine. Many of these chargers are meant to take up to 240 volts, whatever's coming out of the outlet. So just doing this with a simple adapter, and these are pretty inexpensive. I'll put a link in the video description. You could just do this. Do check on your power adapter for whatever it is you're charging and make sure it goes up to 240 volts so you know you're safe plugging it into whatever outlet while you're traveling. Also in this pocket, I have a bunch of little adapters that are kind of floating around, but I really love this one. Again, from Anchor, this is a USB-C to SD card adapter. So if I wanted to just bring my iPad Pro, maybe use Final Cut on iPad Pro, video up there if you want to watch my review, I can just put an SD card right here and then plug this directly into my iPad and I can take the footage off the SD card. So nice little adapter, got that in there. I also have my MagSafe Duo charger. I've had this thing since it first came out and I still like traveling with this as well. So again, redundancy, just keeping that in there. I also have the lightning to headphone adapter jack for my AirPods Max. I have this in the tech bag and I have another one in the Waterfield case holding my AirPods Max because redundancy. Then on this side, I have several USB-C to micro USB cables specifically for that Shure MV7. I wish it was USB-C, but it's not. And I'll always bring two cables just so I don't get caught with a bad cable. I also have a Thunderbolt cable over here in case I need it for my MacBook Pro, maybe an external SSD. And I also got one of these guys in here if I need to clean a lens on a camera, just do that and brush the lens. So, and I could probably separate this stuff even more. I have this little uh, secret pouch here on the Peak Design bag on that side. Nice little carrying handle as well. Again, just love the Peak Design bag. And it probably goes without saying, but I'll also be bringing my iPhone 14 Pro. 
So that's everything in my bag when I travel internationally. If you have any questions on anything I talked about, leave a comment below this video. Also let me know if I should leave the iPad mini at home or the 12.9 inch iPad at home. Still undecided there. And subscribe to the channel, hit that like button. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next video.